How is it going? We are going to do Playmaker. Alright, so, as you know, I assume, uh, if you don't know, Playmaker is a system inside Unity, just um, for animation, really, uh, to get things to operate, run through. Uh, it's like the artist programmer. Either way, um, what we're going to do is get this cube, this beautiful little red cube, to have a point and click. So I'm going to click over there and it'll go zoop. Uh, at a constant speed, and I also want it to update. So I want to be able to click around, and it'll keep going uh, 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 and look around. So the first thing we're going to do before we do absolutely anything, uh, keep in mind I've already put in this terrain. Um, I put in a light up there that is casting shadows, um, so that you can see him because it's it's a little hard to see on the ground plane where he is if you don't have shadows. So I definitely recommend you do that. Um, all you got to do is uh, make him receive shadows, and then you need to set that light up to send shadows. Um, I have hard shadows on because they're just pretty. Either way, uh, what we're going to do is create an empty game object and rename it. Um, click and move uh, script. Actually, you know what? I'll just do clip and move because that's not a script, that's a game object. So what we're going to do is put our character reference in Unity underneath it. So what we're going to do is apply everything to this. Over here it'll be in our components on top, not inside this. So later on if we have a real character with animation systems and everything on top of it, um, what we can do is just swap it out, leave this, swap this, and then this will work perfectly because the script will be attached to the game object on top. So what we're first going to do is, uh, if you haven't done this, it's in your script somewhere, drag in Playmaker. Um, just like that, it'll pop up, just click import, everything you want, don't untick anything. So after that you're going to go Playmaker Editor, and you're going to get this fancy thing. Um, FSM is Finite State Machine. Whatever you're clicking on is active in here. So if I'm on this and I go right click add FSM, it's going to make it for this and a little red icon will appear, but we want it on that. So we're going to go add FSM. Um, just to begin, we're going to name them and we're going to go mouse down. So on our mouse down, um, it does nothing. It's totally pointless at the moment. But if we bring up our action browser and then you take a look at, I've still got to move Take a look at everything it's possibly doing, that's everything you can do in Unity. Throw them together and I'm sure you could make a game that, I mean, programming is the... This is finite, um, but programming is literally infinite. Uh, you'd want a programmer on a final game, but for student purposes, this is this is fantastic for uh, simple things. So, um, I, actually, I'm pretty sure it could get very complex. I mean, we got physics... Either way, we're not looking into that. Uh, we are going to type in mouse, just to get everything to do with the mouse. So, we want get mouse button down. So, when this action starts, it's going to wait until the mouse button goes down, the left mouse button, and it's going to send nothing because we haven't added a transition. Transitions are just, um, it has to run this and then it's going to go do that. So, um, we're going to add another FSM. When this is highlighted blue, you you can't click on this, you have to click on the make it highlight blue, then drag to the end ooh, and make it connect, just like that, perfect and um, when we're going to send the finished event so this one we will call uh, store mouse position so on our store mouse position we're going to come back over and we're going to get mouse pick, so it's going to get the XYZ of my mouse position on the screen um, we need to store the point of this, but there's nothing to store it in at the moment. So you need to go over to a variable that this state will then interact with. So we're going to make a variable. Um, uh, float is a number with a decimal point. Integer is a full number. Boolean, true or false. I'm not sure how you'd make a game object. String uh, characters, vector 2 is uh, two numbers inside itself. Vector 3 is the same, but vector 3 you could do... Um, XYZ, um, RGB, um, to endless possibilities. So if we add our vector 3, we're going to name it um, mouse position. Now it's popped up up here, which means we have a variable called mouse position that is a vector 3. We're going to go back to our state, we're going to store the point in our mouse position. So every time it goes 
um, left click and then it's going to and store the mouse position right here. So we're going to need to add a transition finished and then we're going to connect it up to our next one. Now our next one is going to be the move. So we'll call it move character and we're going to go like this over here. Now iTween is, if I'll type in move, but um, oh, oh, I hit enter. Uh, that's how you remove them by the way, the little cog. So uh, we've got our move. iTween is a system that uh, is inside Playmaker, but I also believe you can bring it in separately. Now iTween is a great way to move. It's got a bunch of settings in it. Everything you click on will appear down here. You've got move to, translate a game, objects, position over time. If you just hover over things as well, it'll give you a tiny description, which is fantastic. So what we're going to use is a move to. We want to move our little guy to this position. So we're going to throw it in and we're going to make the vector position our mouse position. Uh, for remembrance sake, I'll add a finished state to loop it all around. If it, if it doesn't come back, it's going to do that once and then that'll be the end. So if we now hit play, move this out the way, and this, bugger. and I click, well I don't know why that's happening, I don't think I finished this, store it, xyz, uh, right, 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 it's the I believe it's the time, because it was working when it was on zero. So if I make the time zero and my speed, uh, this little button is switch between, switch between your uh, variables over here or just a random number. So we're going to set a speed of five so it's got a consistent uh, speed and then we're going to try this again. Now it's moving like the pivot is up the top there. I bet it's because the pivot of our little fella here was not set when I made him. There we go. Okay, so if we can just set this to zero, we'll come to our guy inside, set him to zero as well. Alright, so now if we head back to Playmaker, sorry, the game state, and perfect, okay. Now the problem is that if I click over there, outside the camera's frame, it's raycasting from the camera, so you can't click too far where the camera can't see. So it's taking a long time, and I want to be able to click around so he'll always follow. But if I want to do that, I need to tick this off. Need to come over here. Oh, you'll also get an error if you try and change something while it's working. You go, Ooh, let's change this to that. You go, because if you untick, obviously, no effects are taken. So if I come over here, now I figured this out earlier, this is not my magic straight away, um, if I change the start event to finished, so every time finished runs here, every single time it goes mouse down and runs, it'll resend a finished, so it's going to resend my vector position and update this. So if I change that and I get rid of stop on exit, and then I hit play, perfect. So what it's doing now is it's getting my mouse, storing it, and then it's coming over here to the iTween move to. But because I changed it to start event finished, every time I click down, it sends a new event, comes to here, and then stores the, the position again, and it updates its vector. And that's exactly where it's going. So um, yeah, that's all I wanted to show for the moment. But what I will do, hopefully later, is be able to hold it down and move around. Now, the, I did have the thought that possibly if you change this one to every frame, so it updates every frame, which so that while I'm dragging my mouse around it would update. I mean, if I just click on stats, I'm running at 82, 88, 95 frames a second, so I thought that it would run it through 95 times a second, but it doesn't. Uh, for some reason it just breaks. Even if you untick it, nothing happens. So. Uh, I wouldn't mess around with that one, but uh, that's our next our next job to try and do. So uh, thanks for watching, and yeah, we'll see you in my next tutorial.